day viewers what a joy it is to grace your screen today this week of palm sunday and we celebrate god for yet another time to celebrate our mighty king of kings hosanna indeed in the highest mm -hmm. today we continue the discussion on the sub theme the victory of christ and our topic says the humble savior Remember last week we considered the God of history and one historical account that cannot be disproved is the fact that on a day like this, more than 2,000 years ago, Jesus rode on an ass into Jerusalem. And we are praying God that the import of that will be evident in our life, even as we study together in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We're equally excited. We have our resource persons in this studio, whom we are trusting the Lord, that the Lord will use them mightily to open up his mind to us via the scripture. By my right, I must say one of our own, the right Reverend Godfrey Ekbenese, the Lord Bishop of Eka. Daddy, welcome home. It's good to have you again. We well, thank God, brothers and sisters in the Lord, may we richly be blessed Amen. through his word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And then by my left is our mommy, my manager Delta West, Dr. Mrs. Chinyere Okojaja. Mommy, you're welcome to the program. Thank you very much. You are all blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Our aims quickly will be to discuss the humility of Jesus Christ at his earthly enthronement. And secondly, to expound the story of Jesus' work of salvation inside the Jerusalem temple. In our tradition, I'll encourage you yet again to get your notepad, get your Bible, sit tight with your family. The Lord will be saying some interesting things to us today via his servants. I would like to take us through our text, Zechariah chapter 9, verses 9 to 10. I'll read from the New King James Version of the Scriptures. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding on a donkey, a colt, the fowl of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. The battle bow shall be cut off. He shall speak peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. This is the word of the Lord. And Thanks be to, to God. God. Introduction, I'll read quickly from our outline. This prophecy was fulfilled when Jesus Christ rode into Jerusalem on what we traditionally call Palm Sunday. The event is recorded in all four Gospels. There's an account of that in the book of Matthew, chapter 21, 1 to 11. Also in Mark, chapter 11, 1 to 11. Luke, chapter 19, 29 to 44. The Synoptic Gospels all had this account. And then John, chapter 12, 12 to 19 also recorded it. This is the only public demonstration Jesus allowed during his ministry. And he did it to fulfill the scripture. When Zechariah made this prophecy about Jesus, Alexander the Great, who was the emperor, came to Jerusalem, and his arrival brought fear to people. But the Jews were commanded to rejoice and shout because their king had come. In contrast, Jesus' purpose in coming was to bring salvation to those who would trust him. How different from Alexander's. Mm -hmm. Alexander rode a mighty horse and proudly led a great army. But Jesus rode a lowly donkey and came in humility. The people who welcomed him were common peasants and children, who laid palm branches and garments before him on the road. The great people of Jerusalem did not welcome him. Jesus could have brought judgment, but instead he brought grace and forgiveness. When we look at John chapter 3, verse 17, we see that clearly, in humility. Moreover, Jesus demonstrated his kingly and priestly authority in the temple by overthrowing the oppressive tables of the money changers and the seats of extortionists, dove sellers, and thereafter healed the sick. You know, in that account, he told them, my house 
shall be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you've made it a den of robbers. Yes. Beyond celebrating Palm Sunday, this day, we are trusting the Lord that whatever is not of Him in our life will be driven off and that the King of Kings will have His right of place in our lives. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We move quickly straight to the study guide. I'm a manager that I was. We would like to start off with you. Okay. From our text, which we just read, Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9 to 10. Maybe I'll read it again for emphasis. What is the significance of horse and ass in human history? And how can you justify the humility of Jesus riding on the letter? I'll quickly read verse 9 only, and then we'll share in your thoughts, ma. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding on a donkey, a colt, the fall of a donkey. What is the significance of a horse and ass in human history? And how do you justify the humility that Jesus showed riding on the letter? Okay, looking at uh, the horse and the ass, they actually belong to one family, yes, ma so to say. Um, by comparing the two, you discover that uh, the horse, as it were, is of a higher breed and uh, somehow have a kind of a higher reputation, so yes. to say, mm. when compared to that of an uh, ass. And uh, looking at it traditionally speaking, we find out that uh, it, is, it is used whether for transportation or for agriculture and all that. Yes, ma now, coming back to the justifying the humility of Jesus yes, in choosing the ass instead of the horse. Yes, ma'am. Ordinarily speaking, looking at uh, Jesus, whom he was and is, is the king. you know, you know that he's a king. He's mighty. He's God himself. Mm. Under normal situation, he's supposed to use what is so great mm. and mighty. They have the aura of that of a king. But he decided to go for the lower part. Just like our text says, he said, lowly and riding mm. on a donkey. Mm. You know, he decided to choose that. Mm. Does it mean that he, he doesn't like to express who he is? No, because of his mission. Mm. Just like the scripture said, uh, though he has the form of God, hmm, he too. brought himself and to took the nature. place of a slave mm -hmm. or a servant. Why? Because he has a mission. Yes, ma'am. He has a mission to accomplish. And for his mission actually to have that impact, you know, he, he knows exactly the, sh the form that he ought to hmm. take. I, I want to draw attention to the introduction. You know, I, I just underline. Uh, some places in that introduction. He said, Alexander the Great, yes, when he came, he, his arrival brought fear, fear to the people. And, and, and look at it. He said, he came with a horse. And the, the description the of the army. horse was given. Mm. And he proudly, he said, okay, he rode a mighty horse and proudly led a great army. army. Now, that is uh, an earthly king. Now, when you look at Jesus, you find that Jesus, of course, is higher than that one. Jesus made him. Mm. But Jesus decided Dead. to come down. <laughs> and he, you know, he's so mighty. And if he actually keep himself high, we will not be able to come to his level. In order That's... to come to our level, he came down, down, brought himself down, down to our level, in order to pick us awesome. up, to take us to where we ought to awesome. be with him. Awesome. And so I think that is a great lesson to us mm. as God's people. You know, sometimes because of our position, mm. our titles, our qualification, and whatever, we allow it to enter our small head. I used to call it small head. Mm. You know, sometimes I say, God, I beg, nothing, nothing should enter this small head. So, mm. The day that thing enters, what do you I have should, that I should just go before that day comes mm. because, well, what is that thing that will really swell your head? Jesus. Jesus ought to have. Being you know, in heaven. Yes. But he decided in order to raise yes. us up from where we, we are. are. I think it's a great lesson. Taking us from our merry clay mm -hmm. and bringing us. Bible said he's made us kings and priests unto God the Father. And we will 
brood on the earth. Revelation chapter 5, 10. My Lord, your take on this. The significance of Jesus humbling himself and riding on a donkey just, or an ass. Just to add to what uh, Mommy said, in, in ancient Israel, yes, sir. Uh, the horse is a significant of battle. Hmm. People groom their horse, train them for battle. Yes, sir. And raise them for war. Hmm. And so they're moving with chariots. Jesus. So when you see horse coming in, you see the significance of a physical warrior. Hmm. Secondly, again, in ancient Israel, horses are decorated. An exhibition of pride. Jesus. Yeah. So people it's come in with great pride when they move with hmm. horses. Yeah. So you see war, you see pride, pride. in a horse. Jesus. But then the other one is the axe. Hmm. The axe ordinarily has four significance. Number one in ancient Israel is service. Jesus. Yeah. Number two is suffering. Awesome. Number three is peace. Hmm. And number four is humility. Jesus. So Jesus coming in upon an axe is a clear significance of Jesus. service. Awesome. Yeah. Rather than war. Hmm. And that's what's better of us today. It's a significant of suffering for our sake. Jesus. And then is the Prince of Peace, mm. which is a clear thing in ancient Israel about donkeys and about us. Awesome. And finally, humility, humility. and not pride. So these these four things are the things that Jesus came in with as we come and read the Palm Sunday, and yes, we're expected to have these things in our life: awesome. service, suffering, peace, peace. Humility. humility, service. Yes. Yeah. And our country at this time need men who will serve. Mm. Bible says he made himself of no repute and took the nature of a servant. Philippians chapter 2. You know my excitement in that scripture is when you begin to read from verse 10 mm. following. Bible say, consequent on this, God gave him a name, name that is above every other name, name. That at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee must yes. bow. I'm already excited. Thank you for those insights, my Lord. Let's look at question 2. With reference to Luke chapter 4, verse 18, my Lord, you help us read. And then Matthew 21, 12 to 14. Mommy Niger Delta, you help us read that. Justify the actions of Jesus in the Jerusalem temple as the Savior of the world. Yeah, Luke, Luke chapter 4, 18. verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Yes. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Hmm. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives hmm, liberty. and recovery of sight to the blind. Awesome. To set at liberty those who are oppressed. Jesus. Matthew 21, 21, 12 to 14. Then Jesus went into the temple of God and drove out all those who brought and sold in the temple and overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. He said to them, It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. Then the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. Awesome. My Lord, justification for the action of Jesus in driving away those who it, turned it, the temple to a place it, of yeah, merchandise. The force is that um, we may not even have all the time to be able to expose um, the kind of business that these people were doing. Hmm. But in summary, um, what they were doing all around the temple was actually an instrument of oppression. Yes, my Lord. People were being oppressed in terms of the market price, hmm. in terms of what was being exhibited and sold. Hmm. And again, there was also high level of corruption. Yes, my Lord. Right from even the priests and down who markets, People had in liberty to even bring in things. They even, they, can, they even tell you where to go and get it. Jesus. So people were, rather than being made free, when they came around the temple, were, were even being uh, sent into from bondage. Jesus. Much burden upon the people. Hmm. And uh, when you look at the passage in, um, in Luke chapter 4, verse, verse 18, 18, it was stated clearly that he has come to preach to the poor. Mm. He has come to heal the brokenhearted. Mm. He has come to proclaim liberty. liberty. 
he had come to those who have been made blind to the recover their sight. sight. So what Jesus did actually opened the door to an entirely new life. Hmm. And again, know that he didn't just only do what man could describe as a physical thing. He went ahead and healed the sick. Awesome. He went ahead and exercised two things, like we saw in the introduction. One, his kingly authority. Hmm which was shown clearly in the way the people packed their things and left that behold the king, king of kings then immediately after that he also exercised his priestly authority by taking over the temple and by healing the sick awesome and so it's a demonstration of the fact that jesus came to save us awesome and as many that embrace jesus today we receive that same salvation and we be healed of all their infirmities amen and their diseases even today Palm amen. sunday amen in the name of jesus amen. amen that's the prayer because you know when you look at that four verse 18 it says, to proclaim liberty to the captive mm. are you out there watching and something is holding you captive yeah. I would say that even the lawful captives of the mighty shall be set free. As our Father and Lord has prayed, receive your liberty in the name of Jesus. Amen. If the Son of Man shall set you free, thou shall be free indeed. Mommy, just a word in two seconds before we go on break. Okay. The significance, the justification of what Jesus did. You know, it is exactly what he came for. Mm. You know, we usually say that where the purpose of a thing is not known, abuse, abuse is inevitable. inevitable. You know, Jesus understood his purpose, mm. why he came. And so when he came around the temple, for example, he saw what ought not to be. Mm. And he didn't waste time to address it. Awesome. He saw a kind of a misappropriation. Mm. He saw a, a kind of a, um, a, um, a diverting priorities. Mm. You know, he, he, he saw what ought not to be seen. Awesome. I, I look at it that it's, it's, it's been strange. He saw strange things happening. happening. Mm. And he didn't really waste time. Mm. He entered and do ex did exactly what he supposed to do awesome you know letting us know also that we should also work with purpose we should be purposeful in our driven. action in whatever we are doing especially our god's people know when we ought to say enough when we ought to know when we're supposed to say oh yeah move this way when we supposed to know the Call right spade, action spade. Mm. to take not a question of uh, just right so okay uh, let's leave it now let's mind you know that kind of a thing so we must have get insight from the life of Jesus and be whom God has, has God designed us to be. Awesome. Especially in this age where there are so many liberal teachings going on, mm. we should know where to draw the line. Mm -hmm. Child of God, that is the import of this day, what Jesus came to do on a day like this. We'll be back in a jiffy to continue the discussion. God bless you. Why do we fall ill? Is it possible to stay without falling ill? Is God interested in our health? Can we get access to cheaper health anywhere? Do you want tips on how to stay healthy? Health Watch, a program to educate your viewers on how to take care of your bodies and deal with different health-related issues. Welcome back. It's been exciting here. The Lord, on a personal note, the Lord has been blessing me, feeding us sumptuously at his feet. Remember again, I have in the studio with me our resource persons, our Father in God, the Lord Bishop of Ekadasis, the Right Reverend Godfrey Ekbenese. Father in God, welcome to the program once again. Thank you very much, and may God continue to bless us as we share in his word. Amen. And then our uh, Mama Niger Delta West. Dr. Mrs. Chinyere Okojaja. Mommy, welcome to the program once again. Thank you very much. Sit tight and get blessed. Amen. We look at question three, and we would like to um, bring that to you, Mama Niger Delta West. How can you liken the actions of money changers and those sellers with some of what goes on 
in certain contemporary churches that preach only prosperity messages? I mean, this is an open ended question kind of yeah. no scriptural references but we are life in our country and we know the travels of the church in our time how do you compare what jesus did with the modern day focus on just prosperity alone yeah you know what what comes to my mind first looking at this passage you know those in the church in the temple Merchandise going on in the temple. I ask myself, what really warranted this? Mm. You know, I, I see a people that are insatiable. Mm. I see a people that greed has taken over them. Mm. I see a people that lack self-control. Mm. That anything can just happen. I, I just see a people that that lack the fear of God, hmm. you know, and so on and so forth. So, so you, you discover that because these things are there, anything can just uh, happen. And that is why today in the church, Unfortunately. you see all kinds of things happening. Somebody can just pick up a passage in the scripture, turn it upside down Out of because context. you just want to enrich yourself, mm. because you just want to achieve something, because there is, you know, you have so much enlarged yourself that you just want to take in and take in mm. and take in and take in. Uh, and, uh, and by so doing, again, you see people that, that are purposeless let me put it there were mm. people that have nothing if I did they don't have the heart of God mm. you know just like Jesus Jesus came to fulfill a purpose mm. now you ask yourself what purpose are these people Fulfilling. pursuing what are they really pursuing? you find out that you just like pursuing your own desire mm. laying that aside say, Who's God is their belly yes laying aside what's you know what is really obtainable and uh, 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 and because of this, so many things are really going on wrong. You keep preaching, and that's exactly what is really going on in our time. A situation where somebody, you just, you, you just look at people, you begin to tell them they are their bank account for goodness sake what has the bank account got to do with, with the salvation of the people mm. and uh, all what not you know mm. what has uh, your the color of your underwears mm. got to do what you know you begin to ask because these are just coming to put fear on people people it, it's just like uh, the alexander the great mm. he came and fear and yeah. the, the, the people and so you see that's exactly what these people are doing so they just come to a point where they chose uh, plant that fear and whatever you have you just begin to release and all that and again prosperity actually is not bad after the scripture says it is the wish of god that we prosper and, and be, be in health, health even as, as our soul, soul prosperity as psalm 35 but, says yes. blessed be the lord who has joy in the prosperity of, of his, his people yes of his so people. It's scriptural and it's okay. scriptural but the, the situation we are the whole thing is just one-sided mm. is a problem and uh, I, I i want to digress a little you know looking at it as individuals now yes ma'am even in our church mm. yeah a situation where some people's prayer point is just me myself and I. Mm. You have still joined the, the bandwagon of the prosperity, whatever. Mm. Because everything now is just you. Uh, around and, you. And, and you check in some of our churches, you know, when you are leading a prayer session or intercession and all that, once the prayer is just um, oh, everything mm. concerning you, the, the voice, our, the sound will be very high. But when it gets, okay, can we pray for the nation, Nigeria? Can we pray, pray for, for our missions. leaders? Can we pray for a mission? I see, the I see you poor people now. Goes down. Oh, that means that indirectly you have joined the prosperity preachers mm. without even knowing. Awesome. And so, so we good. should call ourselves to order. What actually did Jesus come to do? Jesus came to reach out. How far am I reaching Tonight. out? Awesome. At my individual level, at church level, and the wider society. Awesome. My Lord. Yeah. How do we begin to get around this from all the matters or issues that mommy has raised? Yes, uh, money changers and those sellers, like um, she said, is um, actually making merchandise around the church. Hmm. And um, it's, it's quite painful, mm. particularly 
when people are being deceived. And so his message going to our viewers and Christians that we yes, should be Lord. mindful mm. of deception. Yeah. Jesus. A, a, a situation where you are made to pay 5,000, 10,000 for a bottle of anointing oil. Sorry. There's even a situation where the in a scene. church, a church they sell Holy Ghost Koboko. Hey. That's why they buy Holy Ghost Koboko mm. so that you can use it to flog the devil. Mm. And so you queue up and buy Koboko for 20,000 Naira. You, you already been deceived. Is a, is a merchandise. And what is your aim so that the people can now assess their ministry by the kind of card that they use? Hmm. By the size of their church and all that, the kind of suit that they wear, hmm. and that's how they want their ministry assess. And uh, we are deceived, and we follow them. So it's an advice for our people. Yes, my lord. That'll be careful so. where we go and what we do. Awesome. Carrying bottle of what oil, a uh, uh, gallon of mm. oil, carrying anointing oil, carrying this and then and buying that and that. You have to ask yourself, are this this scriptural hmm. or somebody is simply making a merchandise of me? So we don't need to be careful about what is happening in the church today. Awesome. All these are shadows of the things to come. The Bible hmm. says the reality is of Christ. Without the touch of God, without the presence of Jesus on that bottle of water you are carrying, the water is only water. Hmm. We need to be careful and be wary of deception. Let's cite the scriptures like the Berean Christians who went back, studied, yes. to knew that what Paul preached was in accordance with the word of the Lord. There's a whole lot of deception going on. Mm. Let's become worded people, men and women of the scripture. Question four. Why the indigents and children were shouting Hosanna, meaning save us now to Jesus? The chief priests and the scribes were displeased. You know, that's expected. Daddy talked about deception. You mm -hmm. know, this is just psychology. Mm -hmm. When people want to drive away those who are following you sheepishly, mm -hmm. you'll be saying, ah, my place of commerce is being taken away from mm -hmm. me. How can you relate this with the relationship between contemporary rulers and their citizens? That's a very instructive question. Mm -hmm. How can you relate that between contemporary, whether on the spiritual sphere, political mm -hmm. sphere, our academic sphere, how can you relate this how can you draw a balance between these rulers and their citizens? And then the question says, who can save us from tyrannical readers? Yeah, yeah. And thank God you did say, even with the spiritual fair and the political fair. Mm. I'll, I'll quickly look at both of them. Mm. When we look at uh, our political rulers, because they are not really leaders, mm. they are just rulers. Yes, you see the gap between them mm. and the this. citizen. Yes, my Lord. Between their children and the children of the, the common, common voter. You, you cannot, you dare not use your vehicle and block the road of some of our political leaders. They will smash your windscreen. Yes. The same people that voted them into power. Yes, my Lord. It looks as if they are high there on the mountain. And sometimes they don't even see what is happening yeah, below. Exactly. And so children at home, they're not in school, university students, and it's like, you know, yeah, I wouldn't know how when long it, this it, it will last, you know. Then you, you find a situation where there is hunger in the land. And it's like nobody bothers about that. Nobody wants to tell us anything. Mm. So there is a gap actually today between the high, you know, and the low. And not just that, again, even in the church, is big, we're beginning to see it in the church. Mm. Where in some quarters and in some contemporary churches, is somebody described that as millionaire church leaders and poor congregational members. Ha. So, you see, the pastor is a billionaire. He uses private jets. But the members are poor. And together, they are preparing to go to the same kingdom. Mm -hmm. And one is not asking of the other. So, you, you, you see, the gap between these people, you see some element of pride in the among the chief priests you see some element of envy hmm. you see a situation where they are far away from the masses and so that's what we experience today particularly in our country today on our streets in our churches in political meetings and so on so politicians only satisfying in dashing people a pinch of salt hmm. 
and two cups of rice, mm. and then a exercise book, and uh, here and there. You know, and then my they Lord. ride away in and their come horses back after four and years. their chariots and return back after four years again. You know, this. let's put this in context, especially as we build up to another election year next mm. year, because the, the follow-up to that question say, how can we save ourselves from tyrannical rulers? Uh, all right, who can save yeah, us? Yeah. It, it's, it's only God. It, it calls for, one, the Christian to pray. Yes, my Lord. I know we have been praying, mm. but we need to pray this time, more than ever before. before. Secondly, it also calls on Christians to participate in politics. We cannot just pray, fold our hands and go home. Mm. We really need to say, God, raise leaders, humble leaders mm. for us. And so we pray, we vote. Awesome. And allow God to do the rest. Awesome. You know, that calls for action. And somebody will be asking, how do I participate? My Lord Bishop has stated that clearly. You can become active in politics, vie for a position under the leading of God. Or you can also participate via voting in leaders. You know, sometimes we show, the, we show this nonchalance. When it's election time, you see us not participating, not going out to vote. In fact, some Christians may not even have voters' card. Mm. This calls for us to engage and do the bit that we can. And God will help us heal our land. Mama Niger Delta West. Yeah, I, I just want to add this, uh, looking at it from an individual perspective, you know. Like when my Lord Bishop was talking, uh, uh, was talking, he mentioned the gap hmm. between this, the high and the low. Two different worlds. Yes. And now, as we all are here, we are leaders in our at our various levels. Places. Either as directors in the office, or as whatever, or as madam in the house. Hmm. Some of us have house helps. Hmm. And you find that sometimes that the gap, that gap, that thing that we are talking about between, among the political class, you see it, you know, playing out among us, such that the madam is just up there. I'm a woman. I'm talking as a woman. Mm. And the other one is just down yeah. there. And you find that this one might be in pain. You will not be able to have the courage to go Assist. to your madam. Why? Because of the way she has placed yeah. herself. And so we are leaders at our various uh, places. So what is the gap? Just let's ask ourselves the gap between you and the people that are under, under you. you. So that as you are pointing at the political class, you are equally maybe pointing, pointing to yourself. Us. So let's get this thing down to home. And, and really, because sometimes actually, you know, uh, they used to say that uh, power, is it power corrupts. You know, uh, sometimes when you absolute allow, power absolute, power yes, absolutely. you know, sometimes you just occupy a, 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 sm a little, a small position. And Before you know it, you see kind of a maltreatment going down the line. You begin to ask, what's going on? You know, what's going on? So we need to ask ourselves questions and come back to our senses so that the healing will begin from us and now get there. Awesome. Okay. God indeed will help us. Mm. You know, the ultimate measure of, of a man is not in how he treats his equals okay. or those who are above him. Mm. A sage once said that the ultimate measure of a man is in how he treats those who are weak and vulnerable, those who are helpless under him. How do you treat the citizens, those mm. who gave you votes to represent them? How do you treat the house help in your house? How do you treat those that God has brought under you to shepherd their souls spiritually? Mm. You're a pastor in church and mm. you're getting swollen headed. Mm. This calls us to emulate Jesus who rode into Jerusalem on a donkey like the king and the prince of peace, bringing salvation to the world. It's instructive, and we are trusting that the Lord will help us in this season imbibe these teachings in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Conclusion. The eternal victory of Jesus Christ as Savior of the world was demonstrated on the day he rode on an ass to Jerusalem. We shall always follow this earthly example as leaders in our various callings and enterprises 
to work for the joy and deliverance of the people we are called to govern. Mm -hmm. Mommy, it's as if you preempted this, this okay. second, you say, <laughs> in our various callings, mm -hmm. that area where God has called you to be of influence, mm -hmm. we should imbibe this example of Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, I read something in Exeter. I think we may need to quickly read it. The last okay. chapter in Exeter, okay. the secret to the elevation that Mordecai experienced. Mm -hmm. I think Exeter chapter 10, verse 3. For Mordecai the Jew was next unto King Ahasuerus, and great among the Jews, and accepted of the multitude of his brethren, seeking the wealth of his people, and speaking peace to all his seed. Awesome. You know, I read that scripture one day, and the Lord began, what was the secret of his rising? What was the secret of his greatness? The Bible says he sought for the welfare of the Jews. Are you in that position? Are you seeking for the welfare, the greatest number of good to mm. the greatest number of people? Mm. Or are you just there, just for yourself, amassing wealth for even generations yet unborn? Jesus will not do that. Are you a Christian? Are you living for him? Are you living the crucified life? This cause for some level of reflection. I pray that the Lord will help us reflect over this. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Palm Sunday is meaningless if self is enthroned in our lives. Oh. It's meaningless. Self is a destroyer. Mm. This season will be meaningless if self is enthroned in our life. Just like we say during Christmas, if the reason for the season, Jesus, is not battered in your life, Christmas is meaningless. Mm -hmm. So Palm Sunday is meaningless if self is still enthroned in, in yeah. your life. Let this mind be in you, Philippians 2, which was also in Christ Jesus. Memory verse, we take it together. Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. Mm -hmm. We read together. Rejoice, Rejoice greatly, greatly, O daughter, daughter of Zion. Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Behold, that thy king cometh unto thee. He, he is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass, and upon a colt, the fall of an ass. Awesome. Just before we end, our Father and God, our Lord Bishop, just a short word of prayer. You know that Luke chapter 4 verse 18 said, to preach liberty to the captives. But adventure there is someone out there mm who is held bound, maybe by sickness, maybe your finances is held bound. Under this Episcopal grace that we have in today's session, we want to key into it and trust the Lord that God will set you free in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. My Lord Bishop, sir. Just to say to us, today is Palm Sunday and uh, we are sure we're going to church, come and join with our palms, mm. celebrating Jesus. As we pray down, None will return back home the same. Amen. That as you march through the cities, as you come in celebration in church, we pray for somebody. Amen. Whatever siege from it's the pit of hell, mm. by the power the word of the Holy Spirit, Amen. be that set free in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. If there be anyone listening and watching now, and you have not surrendered to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, today, as we remember his entry into Jerusalem, I pray that Christ will come into your life. Amen. And you will not remain the same again. Amen. Sicknesses and diseases, the Bible said, that he healed their diseases. Mm. Be that healed now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Be that healed now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Rise up and walk. Amen. Rise up and sing. Amen. Also, Jehovah. In the name of God the Father. Amen. End of the soul. Amen. End of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Awesome Amen. God. Amen. Awesome God. The God who gives life to the dead mm. and collect the things that be not as though. They were. We are grateful. Lord Bishop, thank you for coming. Thank you. We trust that the work of the Lord in your hand will continue to prosper. Amen. Amen. The land of a car will continue to experience spiritual awakening Amen. under your episcopacy in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Delta, thank you for coming. Thank you. So Our regards to our Father and Lord. Thank you. And for all the work you are doing and all the support, especially in our women ministry. Child of God, we will see you again on this same station next week. Let's continue to live and grow at the feet of Jesus. And the word of the Lord continue to dwell richly amongst us. God bless you.